Continuing our notes on section 2.7, we have the proof examples here. Let's take a look at the first one. So for this example, we're given that segment AB is congruent to segment CD, and segment BF is also congruent to segment CD. And in the end, we want to prove that line CB bisects segment AF. All right, right away I'd be thinking, what do we have to get to in order to prove this bisection? In order to say that that line bisects the segment, we have to somehow say that segment AB is congruent to segment BF. So if we can get that, then we can say that the line bisects segment AF. So let's go ahead and write down what we're given. We're given that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. How do we know that? Because it's given. And for step two, we're given that segment BF is congruent to segment CD as well. And how do we know that? Because it's given. Right away I'd be thinking, okay, those two segments, AB and BF, are both congruent to the exact same segment CD. So that must mean that those two segments, AB and BF, must be congruent to each other. And we can say that that's true by the transitive property. Now you can just write transitive property in your proofs, but let's talk about why those two segments are congruent. And those two segments are congruent because if two segments are congruent to the same segment, then they are congruent to each other. And I think we've reached where we wanted to be. Yep, we wanted AB and BF to be congruent, those two segments, and we've reached that conclusion. So now we can say, that line CB bisects segment AF, and the reason being is we need an if-then statement, and we know that if a line divides a segment into two congruent segments, which is what we mentioned in the previous step above by saying that AB is congruent to BF, so if a line divides a segment into two congruent segments, then what does it do to the segment? Then it bisects the segment. Since we wanted to prove bisection, that should be the last thing that we mention in our proof. It should come after the then statement. Let's take a look at the next example. This next proof says that angle A is a right angle, angle B is also a right angle, and angle B is congruent to angle D. Hmm. Well, if angle B is congruent to angle D, that must mean that angle D must be a right angle as well, since B is. But keep in mind, we have to write down a lot of stuff in our proof to make sure that it flows logically. So let's go ahead and write down our first given. We're given that angle A is a right angle. And how do we know that? Because it's given. Secondly, we're given that angle B is also a right angle. And how do we know that? It's given. We want to prove angle A congruent to angle D in the end. Well, I'm going to go ahead and write the next given, which says that angle B is congruent to angle D. And we know that because it's given. But we somehow want to get A and D congruent. Well, since B is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle D, we can use the substitution property. Can we replace angle B in that statement that angle B is a right angle and we can replace angle B with angle D since they're congruent? So therefore we know that angle D is a right angle as well since angle B is one and they're congruent. And what we used there was the substitution property since we physically replaced angle B with angle D in the statement. And since we wanted to prove that angle A is congruent to angle D, I think we may have enough information. Let's see. So in our, our statements, we listed that angle A is a right angle. Listed that there. And we also mentioned in our proof that angle D is a right angle. Okay, so we mentioned that they're both right angles, so that's enough to say that they're congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle D. Why? Because if two angles 
our right angles, then they are congruent. Now, maybe some of you were looking at this proof and thinking, Miss Stannis, I don't know if this is the only way to go about it because my mind was kind of going in a different direction. I want you guys to keep an open mind with these proofs because sometimes there are more than one ways to do it. So pause the tape now. Think of another way. Now we're going to look at a second way to go about it. Now there may even be more than these two ways, but I just want to show you this is a really good example of a proof in which you could do in more than one way and it can still be correct so long as all of the information is provided in the proof. So, you don't have to write this one down. I know you only, only had one copy of this proof on your notes, but I do just want you to follow along. So I want to expose you to the idea of there being more than one way to prove a proof. I know we've talked about that before, but this is a really good example in my opinion. So we're writing down our givens again. So angle A is the right angle, angle B is the right angle. And right there, maybe some of you guys were thinking this last time, but we can say that angle A and angle B must be congruent. I know in the past when we've talked about two angles being right angles, we have concluded that they're congruent. So let's go ahead and say that. We know that that's true. So angle A must be congruent to angle B because if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Now, keep in mind we want to prove that angle A is congruent to angle D. Okay, let's see. So I believe at this point we've only used two of our givens. We said that angle A is a right angle. We said that angle B is a right angle. What I'm going to do is check those off at the top just to kind of, okay, but we still haven't mentioned that angle B is congruent to angle D. So let's go ahead and write that in. So angle B is congruent to angle D. And how do we know that? Because it's given. And at this point now, this is beautiful. It says angle A is congruent to angle B, angle B is congruent to angle D, and in the end we want to prove that angle A is congruent to angle D. Well, both angles A and D are congruent to the same angle B. So, we can say that angle A is congruent to angle D because of the transitive property. And once again, that would be enough for you to write, but let's in parentheses write below what we are working with and we have two angles that are congruent to the same exact angle which means that they're congruent to each other. So we didn't even use substitution property in this proof, we used transitive property. So please keep that in mind moving forward.